Those who have forgotten God's law of life, with this title, let us take some time to study the Word of God together. When we look at the history of the Garden of Eden, we can conclude that the sin of Adam and Eve began when they had forgotten God's law. Whether it was through temptation or other physical reasons, they had forgotten God's law. You shall not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This led them to sin, and in the end, they became unfortunate people who were involved in sin. Then, let us take a moment to think about all the people who live in this world today. What is the most important reason the last judgment will be brought upon this world? It is because all mankind has forgotten God's law while living their lives. Since they do not live according to the teachings of God's law, nor follow God's decrees, they have ended up in a situation where God cannot help but bring judgment upon this world. We are the souls who committed sins in heaven and were cast down to the earth. We are given a short life on this earth, the city of refuge, in order to receive from God the forgiveness of all our sins and transgressions. We can say that this is the status of mankind who are living in this world. Therefore, above all else, we must never forget God's decrees, regulations, and laws. One of the most important reasons why we committed sins against God in heaven also originated from forgetting God's law. In today's global village, there are many churches like the sand by the seashore, and there are many people who claim to believe in God. However, they have forgotten God's law while living their lives. They have forgotten about which day the Sabbath is and whether or not they should keep God's feast of life. Since they are living their lives without knowing this, the prophet Isaiah prophesied that God is going to lay waste the earth and devastate it, and that he will ruin its face because the people have forgotten God's everlasting covenant, God's decrees, regulations, and laws. He wrote in the book of Isaiah that mankind will bring upon themselves their own consequences. There are so many churches today, but we should examine whether they remember and follow God's decrees, regulations, and laws or not. This is how we can measure our faith in God. Today, let's take a look at the book of Hosea chapter 4 and take some time to confirm that we must never forget God's decrees, regulations, and laws. Let's open the book of Hosea chapter 4. Let's take a look at Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. In chapter 4 verse 6, God says, My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you as my priests. Because you have ignored. In other words, what have they forgotten? The law of your God, I also will ignore your children. The more priests there were, the more they sinned against me. They exchanged the glorious God for something disgraceful. In Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, it is written that people have forgotten the law of God. Indeed, numerous people around the world have forgotten God's law while living their lives. Is Sunday worship the law of God? Is Christmas the law of God? They cannot even discern the difference. All the laws of life that God has given to us were destroyed and abolished, and people have forgotten all of them. Since this is the current status of mankind, they are now in a pitiful situation where their faith is not considered true faith. Let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. 
Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let's take a look at the earnest request of God that urges us to never forget His words, decrees, regulations, and laws. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 11, it is written, Be careful that, what should we be careful of? Be careful that, you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe His commands, His laws and His decrees that I am giving you this day. God's commands, regulations, and decrees can be summed up as the laws of God. The Bible warns us to always be careful that we do not fail to observe the laws of God so that we do not forget God. This is because God has already prophesied in the Bible that if we forget God and fail to keep His laws, an ungracious result will follow. God has established His decrees, regulations, and laws in order to give us blessings. However, nowadays, countless churches around us have forgotten the Sabbath day, the Passover, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Instead, they keep Sunday worship, celebrate Christmas, and observe other man-made feasts arbitrarily. In this regard, when we look at the history of David, the forefather of faith, as the time drew near for David to die, he gave a request to his son Solomon. David said to Solomon, you must never forget God's law. He left this as his last will. This scene is written in 1 Kings, chapter 2. Also, when Moses entrusted Joshua with all the authority to lead the Israelites, he also gave him the same request, you must never forget God's law. It is written that whenever we forget God's law in any age, great woe will come upon us from then on, and misfortunes will inevitably come upon us. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and find out about this. Deuteronomy chapter 28. In Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1, it is written, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all His commands I give you today, the Lord your God will. What will He do? Set you high above all the nations on earth. It is written that when we fully obey God's laws and regulations and follow all His commands, God will set us high above all the nations on earth. Let's continue with verse 2. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. When we do not forget God's laws but obey it faithfully, whatever we do will be filled with abundant blessings since God will always grant us these blessings. Let's move on to verse 15. What consequences will occur if we forget the law? Chapter 28 verse 15. However, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all His commands and decrees I am giving you today, what will come on you? All these curses will come on you and overtake you. You will be cursed in the city and cursed in the country. Your basket and your kneading trough will be cursed. The fruit of your womb will be cursed, and the crops of your land, and the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. You will be cursed when you come in and cursed when you go out. God's law contains many blessings. Whenever people forget God's laws, they fail to believe in God and receive Him when He comes as the Savior. 
It is written, you will be cursed when you come in and when you go out. God says with a very distressed heart that if we forget his laws, the result completely opposite from the blessings will follow us throughout our lives. Today, however, when we take a look at the global village, although there are 8 billion people living on the earth, only a few people remember God's laws and obey them. It has been already prophesied in Matthew chapter 7. Compared to the world's population of 8 billion, their number is indeed a very small fraction. That is why the Bible teaches us, small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. The Bible also enlightens us, wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. Today, we are able to confirm the result of those who have forgotten God's law and of those who have remembered God's law by reading Deuteronomy chapter 28. Moreover, when we look at the history of the kings of Israel and Judah during the dynasties, we can see the case of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Judah had completely forgotten God's law. But Hezekiah realized, keeping the Passover on the 14th day of Nisan is God's command, but we have not kept it. In this way, he remembered and kept God's law. As a result, he became a king who received abundant grace and favor from God, didn't he? When he followed God's decrees, regulations, and laws, his situation changed. God allowed him to be blessed when he came in and when he went out. Even in this last age, many people in the world have faith in God, hoping that they will receive blessings, receive eternal life, and enter the eternal kingdom of heaven. However, they are not making any effort to know about the decrees, regulations, and laws God has given to mankind. There is a record in the Bible about what God will say to such people. Let's turn to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7. They all wish to go to the kingdom of heaven but fail to correctly carry out the will of God who has shown the way to heaven. They are in such a pitiful situation. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 21, Jesus says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. In the age of the Father, God established the law of salvation for the people of that age to be saved. In the age of the Son, God proclaimed the law of salvation for the people of that age to be saved. The age we are living in today is neither the age of the Father nor the age of the Son, but the age of the Holy Spirit. In the age of the Holy Spirit, too, God has come to this earth to restore and proclaim the truth of the new covenant. He wants all mankind to obey and keep his decrees, regulations, and laws. In Matthew chapter 7, it is written that those who do the will of Father will enter the kingdom of heaven. Then, what is the will of Father? Where has he engraved his will? God has engraved his will in the law of each age. Let's continue to read God's word in chapter 7 verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you. What do these people practice? They practice lawlessness. In other words, do they keep God's law? The act of not keeping God's law is called lawlessness. Jesus said, Away from me, you evildoers, you who practice lawlessness. 
Ultimately, the eternal kingdom of heaven will be granted to those who keep God's decrees, regulations, and laws, firmly believing that it is our God who established them. Then, let us think about the Sabbath day that we are keeping today. In the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, how does God express it? What does God say about the Sabbath day? Forget about it. You don't have to keep it. Does he say this? He commands us, do not forget the Sabbath day. Remember, means, do not forget, right? Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. This is God's word written in Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Isn't this alone enough for us to confirm if the whole world has forgotten God's law or if the whole world remembered God's law correctly? Which one is it? Have they forgotten about it or have they remembered it? They do not remember anything, not even the Sabbath day. They have forgotten everything. Therefore, it is just like the days of King Josiah and King Hezekiah. Whenever people do not remember God's law, whom do they come to worship? They worship all kinds of idols. Although they are worshipping all kinds of demons, they mistakenly think that they are worshipping God. Nowadays, there are numerous churches around us. Although they claim to believe in God with their lips, do they follow the decrees, regulations, and laws that God established for mankind? They have forgotten all of God's decrees, regulations, and laws. They do not remember anything. That is why God said that he will judge the world with his law on Judgment Day. Let's turn to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Chapter 1 verse 7. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 7, it is written, and give relief to you who are troubled, and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. When will he appear in blazing fire? It is the last day, judgment day. When he appears in blazing fire, he will punish those who do not know God. They do not know God the Father and God the Mother. And, who else? Those who, do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Everyone, what covenant is called the gospel? It is the new covenant. Although God has taught us about the new covenant numerous times in the Bible, these people have forgotten all his words. Therefore, what is the end result of those who do not obey the gospel? They will be punished with. What will they be punished with? Everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. Nowadays, there are so many people around us who have forgotten God's law. That is why we need to teach them God's law, the Sabbath day and the Passover. Who restored and taught us the Sabbath day and the Passover? We must tell them the correct answer to this question. Who instituted the law? God established both the law of the new covenant and the law of the old covenant. Then, if they don't keep the law, how do they treat God who established the law? We can only come to the conclusion that they ignore him and treat his words with contempt. If we believe in God, should we take his decrees, regulations, and laws lightly? According to Micah chapter 4, where will the law go out from in the last days? It is prophesied that the law will be proclaimed and established by God who dwells in Zion. According to Isaiah chapter 33, who is the Lord? He is our lawgiver. In other words, it is God who established the law. God established the decrees, regulations, and laws of the new covenant. We should not blindly keep worship on Saturday just because it is the Sabbath day. 
we should look at the one who ordained the Sabbath day. Isn't it the law of the new covenant we are keeping today, according to his command? Since God established the law, we must keep it and obey it. If the Sabbath day and the Passover are not God's command, then they are meaningless. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 33. Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 33 verse 20. Look on Zion, the city of our festivals. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a peaceful abode, a tent that will not be moved. Its stakes will never be pulled up, nor any of its ropes broken. There, meaning, in Zion, the Lord will be our mighty one. It will be like a place of broad rivers and streams. No galley with oars will ride them. No mighty ship will sail them. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, meaning, he established the law. The reason why the law is important to us is because God established the law. Isn't this true? Whom do we believe in? It is not that we believe in the law itself. The law is important to us because we believe in God who established it. This is because the law came from God, and it is what God has commanded us. If we ignore God and focus only on the law itself, our faith will be meaningless, it can never be victorious. Therefore, the direction of our faith should always be towards God who established the law. It is written in Deuteronomy, chapter 28, that when we obey all the decrees, regulations, and laws that God gave us, we can be blessed when we come in and when we go out. However, what if we don't obey them? The Bible says a curse will always follow us. It is written, you will be cursed when you come in and cursed when you go out. Everyone, we must remember the words in Isaiah chapter 33. Who is the Lord to us? He is our lawgiver. God established the law for us. In the age of the Father, God Jehovah established the law. In the age of the Son, who established the law of the new covenant in Luke chapter 22 verse 7. Jesus Christ established the law of the new covenant. In the age of the Holy Spirit, the law of the new covenant, which had been destroyed, was restored during the 37-year reign of David. The new covenant, which he preached for three years at his first coming, must be carried over at his second coming so that we can keep it in the last age, the age of the Holy Spirit. God himself must come to this earth a second time and establish the new covenant again. Since God established this covenant, no one else can do it. No matter how many scholars dissect and analyze every word in the Bible, they will never be able to understand the law of the truth of the new covenant. However, God allowed us to know and obey the law of the new covenant, God's law of life which all mankind have forgotten for a long time. Today, let us think of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother who established the law and be sure that we are going to the eternal kingdom of heaven. Remembering the words of Christ who said, only the one who does the will of my Father will enter the kingdom of heaven, let us never lose confidence in the law of the new covenant God granted us. We should never forget God's grace but give thanks to him. Let's take a look at Micah chapter 4 verse 1. In chapter 4 verse 1, it is written, in the last days. Isn't the last day the age of the Holy Spirit? In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. 
Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, meaning the truth. What will God do? He will teach us his ways, and we should be the ones who follow his ways. Isn't the way the law of life that God will give us in the age of the Holy Spirit? so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from. Where will the law go out from? In the last days, the law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. In this way, the law went out from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Then, regarding the law of life that God has proclaimed in the last days, what should we do? Should we think, I can forget about the law and omit some parts from it? Depending on the case, since my situation is like this, I may omit some parts of the law. No, we should not. Since the law is indispensable in the invisible spiritual world, God has established all the ways in his law through which we can be blessed when we come in and when we go out. We should not understand the law as a law itself, but rather, we must first understand the one who established it. Today, let us carefully think, who gave us this law, so that while we keep the Sabbath day, the prayer times, and the seven feasts in three times, we will always remember God's grace, blessing, and love contained in each law. Once again, I would like to ask all of you to never forget God's love in them. We are truly blessed people. God has set up the whole system of the universe for us so that we can be blessed when we come in and when we go out. Since God has ordained everything for his people who will be saved, I hope that all of us will follow only his path and receive great blessings from him. By this, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.